Hello YouTube, my name is Jody from Decorous Vintage Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to be doing a makeover of a makeover. So sometimes I start a piece and halfway through, I do this quite regularly, actually more than I probably should, um, I decide I'm not really that keen on it and sometimes I also paint a piece and totally forget to do anything with it and it just ends up collecting dust. So I have quite a few of these pieces in my workshop right now. Um, so I'm going to be doing a lot of makeovers over makeovers in the coming weeks. So yeah, I just wanted to, in case any of you guys wondered why I'm painting over already finished pieces. But hey, that's the joy of painting, right? We can just paint over it as many times as we like until we're happy. So today I'm going to be doing something very textured, very grungy, so make sure you stay tuned for that. So to start this project today, I mixed buttercream, a chalk mineral paint by Dixie Bell with sea spray, which is a texture additive, and made it really thick and gloopy. I wanted this really textured, really gravelly, and really thick. I want it to be one of those pieces that you want to touch as well as look at. Using a premium chip brush by Dixie Bell, I then stippled this on. So the premium chip brush, the reason why I use this brush is because it is natural bristled, which means it will offer more texture. The stippling will offer more texture and also it's a really cheap, inexpensive brush. So sea spray will knacker your brushes and stippling will definitely do that as well. So make sure that when you are stippling and using sea spray that you use either an old brush or a cheap brush, you know, one that you don't mind kind of ruining a little bit. All right, so what I have here is a color called Gravel Road by Dixie Bell, which is a gray color, but it also has a lot of brown in it, which you can definitely see more once it's watered down. So I have, sat the, I have saturated my furniture. However, the buttercream and sea spray are completely dry. I have also saturated my brush and I'm almost creating a bit of a wash with this. So just with another chip brush, again, because they're textured and cheap, I am just rubbing the paint over the top of the sea spray, allowing some of the buttercream still to peek through and then if I feel like it's gone a little bit too thick, I'm just patting with a bit, bit of kitchen roll just to soften that up a little bit. Also I'm sorry guys, I feel like I've really gotten in the way of the camera here, I obviously wasn't paying enough attention, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing in the corner here and I was just basically doing that all over the piece of the furniture, on the sides, on the top, I followed the same process. You all alone in the back of my mind I'm under your spell, I can't get out My heart falls five below Here I now have Bunker Hill Blue Still kind of glamorously in the way of the camera there Again, <laughs> I'm really sorry um, so there is also a little bit of palmetto at the bottom there, a little bit of green I just want to you to ignore that because it had no bearing on the finished look it was just something I was testing to see how I felt. So I went in with Bunker Hill Blue now that the gravel road is dried and I went in there quite thick. Initially, I sort of had a play. I was like, do I want it thin? Do I want it thick? But actually in the end, I went in there quite thick, not using any water. And I painted the, the bottom half of the furniture in that, almost doing a sort of oval shape, like a semicircle shape, so that it reached up really high towards the sides, but then sort of curved down there in the middle. I then applied some kernel mustard at the top. So this is where the gravel road is really gonna shine. So again, I put on the kernel mustard quite thick. However, I also still allowed some of the buttercream and some of the gravel road underneath to peek through. You will find it, it is actually a little bit hard work sometimes painting over sea spray in this way because it just drags your brush and you really have to put on a little bit of pressure, you know, just to kind of get that paint moving. But it's so, so worth it for a rustic textured look. Thank you. 
I then started lifting some of that Bunker Hill blue up to the sides there. It's looking like a crazy hot mess right now. I promise it's gonna it's gonna be brought together. I promise. <laughs> and I'm just sort of placing my colours where I want them here, just building up the layers, but they're always brought together in the end. So I'm just getting a feel here for where I want the colours. Um, in the end, as I say, I brought the Bunker Hill Blue right up to the sides, left a little dip there in the middle, and then brought the Colonel Mustard down into that. And this is where I decided that actually I wanted to put the Bunker Hill Blue on much, much thicker than what it was. So it kind of goes back to that whole thing that it's just paint have fun also take your time and have a play because you know sometimes you can go in a totally different direction to what you first started with sometimes it's a bit of problem solving and you just need to figure out where you're going next but just always always have fun with it because who doesn't love color and paint and you know relaxing with it so yeah I then brought some caviar into this, which is Dixie Belle's Truest Black, and I just placed it mostly around the edges where the blue was, and I'm putting it on quite thick. The blue isn't dry yet, so it's blending a little bit into the Bunker Hill blue as well, but I'm not using any water because I want those edges. I want it to look very, very rustic. The other thing that I wanted to mention as well is that I'm using the same brush for this. So I use separate brushes for the blue and the yellow because obviously if those colors mix, it would just make green. So, but for the blue and the black, I am using the same brush. And as you can see here, I am very kind of just almost sporadically putting the caviar in random areas. I just want it to look very, very kind of grungy and dirty. Like it has really seen a life. I then did something very similar with the Colonel Mustard and I used a colour called Rusty Nail and started randomly applying that in some areas on the top. Again, just to make it look like it's got a build up of colour, that some of the colours are starting to wash away and change. Um, so yeah, so I'm focusing the Rusty Nail mostly, mostly around the edges. But again, I am bringing that down into the yellow and I even brought a little bit down into the Bunker Hill Blue. The reason being is like contrasts beautifully with the blue. Look at the colors, colors, colors. Next up we have Florida Orange and this is a really bright bold pigmented orange. I have just saturated furniture, completely saturated the top of the furniture with my water mister and I am applying it with my premium chip brush. Again as I'm applying it I am continuing to mist with water because I want it to look really diluted, a little bit again like a bit of a wash and really drippy and I'm just bringing that downwards. So the goal here is not to cover up everything underneath. I still want some of that yellow, some of that buttercream and even little peaks of that gravel road to shine through there but I just want it to look like perhaps at some point this piece might have been, the top of this piece might have been really really orange however it has started to fade over time it has got gotten weathered and maybe that's why some of the you know the orange and the pigments have started to wash out hence some of the yellow and stuff poking through I don't know <laughs> this is the weird place these are the weird places my mind goes to sometimes when I'm painting I don't know if there's any kind of science behind it it's just where my mind goes so yeah so I'm just randomly putting some of this Florida orange in places and again if I feel it's a little bit too thick I'm just patting with my kitchen towel following the exact same process I did the same thing with the rusty nail again I'm thinking maybe you know the different variations in color will make it look a lot more faded however I'm making the rusty nail much much drippier so I'm mainly focusing the rusty nail at the top of the piece I'm saturating again and then I am dragging it down because I want it to look really really drippy so this is where it's going to start looking a little bit runny and weathered
All right, so now this is all dried, I have some hundred and no hundred grit sandpaper and also a little bit of a artist knife although I scrapped that I decided actually I didn't like that and I am just sanding over the top of this piece now so remember we have the buttercream on underneath with all of that lovely sea spray so as I sand this all of that texture from the sea spray is going to really really start to show through here along with the buttercream and this is just going to make the piece look really aged and faded. I'm not sanding everywhere, I am leaving some um, some parts of the piece, I am leaving that unsanded so that the colours look more vibrant and then in other places I'm sanding even more to make it look more aged so that it looks realistically aged. I still felt this piece just needed a little bit of something more so I decided to finger paint on some flowers. Have you guys ever tried finger painting before? It's actually, <laughs> it's really fun. So I didn't want anything too elaborate, um, I wanted something that just was more of a soft impression of flowers so I thought finger painting was perfect for that. I only used three colours. I used Barn Red for the petals, I used my buttercream to highlight the petals and then I used Evergreen just to make it look like the petals are encased in leaves. So this is a really fun, really free flowing way of painting and I would encourage you to try it because it just helps you, you know if you're someone that thinks that you might feel like you're not very good at art then this is a great thing to try because it's abstract, it's not literal, so you don't really have to go and learn any special techniques, all you have to do is look at the shapes and colours of something and just try and very roughly give the impression of that. I'm focusing the flowers around the edge of the blue just on the right side. I didn't want this to be symmetrical in any way or anything, I just wanted it to look that maybe, I don't know, maybe there's flowers blowing in the wind or something like that. Um, I'm using a little bit of water to help this move but I'm not using a crazy amount. I don't want it, you know, drippy or anything like that. I just want to help the, um, the paints move a little bit. What you will find a lot of the time with finger painting as well is that it becomes quite textured but as this is a textured piece that's just even more perfect. I then went ahead and got my sandpaper and very, very lightly sanded. I didn't sand the whole, you know, whole bou bouquet of flowers. I just wanted them to look like part of the piece and not like they've been painted on top. So all I'm doing here by sanding is just softening the colours a tiny little bit. Now it's time for waxing, which is my favourite part, but I know some of you guys a little bit on the fence about it or it's a little bit divisive honestly you could just leave it here if you wanted and just use some clear wax just to seal the piece the wax will then harden and yeah it will protect the paint I am going to come in with lots of black wax for this so I have put on a base of Big Mama's Butter which is an oil based wax um, I think it can be really really good for conditioning and nourishing wood and sea spray you know it's just a really good wax to use for that kind of thing and then once I, ha I have applied this all over the piece um, I am then going to come in with some Bestang wax in black. So I'm putting on the black wax quite thick, however I am not putting it everywhere. So I'm putting it quite heavy down there where the blue is, especially around the edges because that is often where things are exposed and that's what makes something aged. So I am, just like I did with the caviar really, I'm putting this sort of sporadically and randomly in some areas just because this will help give the piece a lot more character, it will age it a lot more and also it would add a lot more depth. But as I say, if it's not for you, you can totally skip this part. But I'd love to know in the comments, are you a fan of black wax or are you more of a sort of clear wax, clear coat kind of person? 
Also, the reason why I put the clear wax on first is because firstly, that will then protect and seal the whole piece because I put it everywhere. Also, it means that when I apply my black wax, if I, it just sort of acts as a bit of a base. So if I go in there with too heavy handed with the black wax, the black wax isn't going to soak straight into the paint or the wood. The clear wax is there first, which means it's easier to soften and remove. So I often blend my black wax into clear wax because it just means then that I can soften the black wax if I need to. and here's the finished look let me know in the comments as always guys what you think i love to hear your thoughts and as always you can grab all of your supplies today if you're in the us via the links below have a lovely day and happy painting